But there's only one guaranteed way you can have peace, and you can have it in the next second. Surrender. I didn't think you had it in you. I'm your huckleberry. We will not go quietly into the night. It is your killer instinct which must be harnessed if you expect to survive in combat. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers? I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. They will be met with fire and fury like the world has never seen. Remember this day, man. Or it will be yours for all time. What keeps you awake at night? Nothing. I keep other people awake at night. Hey, look at that. We don't have a main webcam. <laughs> it's black. Man. What is going on? It's just Remember, a black the screen. safe word is subscribe. The safe word is subscribe. Man, <laughs> check check that out. Why do I not have a, a webcam? That's interesting. Uh, can we... I know, right? Yeah, it's all... I know. Well, we've got a backup cam. Yeah. See, check this out. We got we got a backup cam. <laughs> so we, that thing. <laughs> I know. It's right. We gotta, <laughs> we're gonna turn it here. I know. Blue Barracudas. You were so, messing with something earlier. See, this is he thought that he was gonna take the reins and show, you know, our new intern how to do stuff. I know Avery. She's she's new. I know, right? I know. Yeah, he totally, so he totally it's Thursday it. night. Uh, it's episode number fifty-one, and we are broadcasting live from the beautiful. Colorado Ranch, and we seem to be having some, you know, technical difficulties. Of I mean, water. I asked for the fizzy Coke bottles. You asked for and the I fizzy got Coke like bottles. the regular Haribo. You did. I wanted the fuzzy ones. You know, they pop, sizzle in your mouth. We got we got connections going on. I wonder why that webcam isn't coming on. That's that's interesting. <laughs> I have no idea what's going on. It's our one year anniversary. I mean, we've been doing this a year. And it doesn't matter because crap still goes wrong. I just I, that was that was totally like you know that's what she said. Catfish. <laughs> the webcam's not working. I don't know what's going on. Adam. I know, right? Uh, I am the kaiju, the supreme commander of the Valken Alliance, and I'm your co-pilot this evening. And to my right, your left, is my cohort cohort in crime. Geek dork I'm nerd be and beautiful mind and genius. So far, who's steering this? Obviously, it's not us <laughs> because because the, the the cameras are are not working. I we have to blame Phil. We, we have to blame Phil. Okay. So um, and I do believe we're getting some uh, sound feedback from from the green room from either Corey or Ryan. Uh, from their external speakers, because I, I think there's some uh, some bleed over going on. Um, but I know you don't own speakers yet. <laughs> I don't own speakers. I'm stuck with the. Oh, we they don't hear them yet. Headphones. They don't hear them yet. So uh, Holly, can you roll the teleprompter a little bit? Maybe the the teleprompter is uh, is 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 working. Um, well, so when we we'll skip we, over that, I know we're we just don't have an awesome show. Tonight. We're just already crashing here, man. I don't, I have no idea uh, what happened with that. That's interesting. How easy it is is it to share this broadcast? It's very easy. You know what? All you have to do is just grab your phone. You can hit share, share it straight to your screen, or uh, tag a friend. I'm gonna tag. I'm gonna tag Big G. Get Big G in here. So. Um, Oh, you could probably go to this one right there, and Mod 2.5 is probably trying to send us some uh, I doubt it. some messages. <laughs> He's probably laughing. Like oh, up. we got uh, oh Milson Medic in the house. We got Bacon from uh, Dire Wolves. Jesse Lopez, uh, Alejandro Camps. Hey there, my name is Ilium Camps. My team and I were recently sponsored by you guys. Thank you so much for the trust and opportunity. Oh, Miami Outlaws. That's right. Cool, cool. Welcome, Alejandro. Uh, we got uh, Richard uh, Tokerman from uh, Strikeforce. Uh, let's see who else is in here. Matthew Holler. 
Matthew Holler from Mid Missouri Airsoft. What is going on? Did you tag somebody? I don't know. My my swiping's not working. Your your swiping is not <laughs> swiper. No swiping. Which, which way is it on Tinder? Swiper. I, don't know. I know, right? Um, <clears throat> let's see. Dev Balcon. I know. So uh, we also let's see if this transition works. Hey, that works. <laughs> so. Uh, you know, we have a thing going on here uh, every Thursday night now called the Hammer Comment of the Night. So, for those of you watching the show, you can't read between the lines. It's the comment that almost gets you banned. Yes, where so you it's walk up savage, right to the cliff. Clever quip you can come up with that almost gets you banned, but not quite. That is right. So, and uh, man, who else do we have? Uh, Who's this Andrew guy? I know. Wasn't he like a thing on YouTube? I know. Shrike Tactical. So close, which I know. I was like, ah, I know, because he just sent me this video on YouTube. You sent me, Richard, you sent me the video YouTube link for you guys playing at Strike Force South. But it is Shrike Tactical, sure. is the Airsoft team. All right. Um, and, yes, sorry, Matthew, and Missouri Airsoft and Simulation site. So, yeah, this is a wonderful... It you know it's because you you needed motor oil that's what it was it's you you needed yeah. you needed motor oil um, also well, we have commutes are hard so <laughs> like I gotta keep yeah and we do have a um, tradition here the overachiever of the night which is the very first poster uh, because they had absolutely nothing to do other than wait for our show to start and tonight that was bacon. From Dire Wolves, good job. You got the overachiever. I mean, I saw his. He, he shared the uh, the notice and tagged everybody, so he was genuinely excited. So apparently, he was. He he's was excited about tonight's guests. It is. Um, and these, you know, topics you've been coming up with, I have nothing to do with. Any plausible deniability. I have nothing to do with plausible the plausible deniability. Plausible deniability. Um, Josh, who do we got joining us up in? Uh, Technical tonight. We have, uh, as usual, tonight's production crew is Holly in control room B. Um, and we are going to welcome back our intern, Avery. She's on the ball tonight with concessions, but um, this camera issue. I know, right? I don't know. But, but, but we're moving on. Hey, and they're not even the fizzy gummies. But it's better than when we had the push to talk episode. That's uh, right. Video we can deal with sound. I think we made that intern cry. <laughs> and please give it up for the best AI mod in the industry, mod 2.5. So we got two whole revisions after. Oh yes. Here. I'm gonna give him. I'm gonna give him big hearts. Mm. AI 2.5 mod, big hearts, big hearts, big hearts. Heck yeah. So we, you know, we we up the processing power this week. So you know, I think we've. Ironed out most of the paintball kinks, so it speaks airsoft. Now we're like the same size. <laughs> I'm like too close. You you got like tiny head. And if uh, those of you that want to support the show out there, all you have to do is head on over to ValconAlliance.com. First of all, sign up and join uh, the largest player uh, network in airsoft. Um, but you could pick up one of our T-shirts, either join the alliance or as seen on the Valken Debrief uh, t-shirt, all proceeds of those shirts. Oh, Josh, Josh is actually wearing one. Let's I'm actually wearing yeah, And he's got his other one. Yeah. Oh, actually, yeah, we're, we're wearing them. There they are. Imagine, imagine there that. they are. Show them your shirt. Hmm? Yeah. Show so them them nipples. So soft and that printing. I know. Just... It's so awesome. So be sure to check that out. And again, if you are wondering uh, where to go to sign up for Valken Alliance. Just head on over to valkenalliance.com. There's what the page looks like, it's all electronic form. You know, fill out any of your information. It is free, doesn't cost you a darn thing. It is free. So why are all the transitions working without the camera? Yeah, I don't know, I don't know. But you know, something's going right. And uh, after you do sign up, be sure to head on over to the Facebook groups. Each region has has a Facebook group, and tonight's featured region is Region 2, the Appalachian region. So we finally got him to pronounce it correctly. I know, I pronounced it correctly. Can you believe that? I actually uh, pronounced it uh, correctly. So, 
Hey, look at that. Hey, even the call, even our name tag still works. I know. So that's you got the right label there. You got the right label here. I mean, so we're right. gonna try to figure out. Hey, great. <laughs> um, and oh, you know, you do realize that you're named after a line of labels that I shoot through my printer. Oh, that's true. That's true. And for those that uh, just joining in, we are celebrating our one year anniversary. Look at that confetti so day. Confetti is falling to the sky. Mm. Don't don't look up. It might get caught in your eye. So um, we've been doing this for one year. One year. I, one year. That's kind of scary. I know it's scary. It's really scary. We haven't we haven't been booted um, by internet jail or sucked. Facebook jail. Yeah, we haven't, we haven't been sucked. sucked. We're not in jail yet. But uh, real quick, because these are, like apparently these guns aren't illegal yet. <laughs> So, to help us celebrate, we got a great anniversary wish from uh, our other show, Valken Core Live on Tuesday nights. So It was actually, in all, it was actually a very uh, thoughtful gesture. So it was. Know, it was. Knowing these guys and Chad, he's a really, he's a solid dude, so let's uh, share that uh, our first birthday. Yes. Hi. I'm East Celeb Chad Dolce Carter, Regional Commander for the Vulcan Corps, and co-host of Vulcan Corps Live, wishing the Vulcan Alliance a happy one-year anniversary. Bees up, target down, whatever it takes. Man, that was so nice, East Celebs, <laughs> East Celebs. You know, we won't hold it. We won't hold it against him that he said one-year anniversary of Vulcan Alliance. He meant the show. We know he meant the, the show. I, and I know what you paintballers are doing with this jar here, but I am going to stick to my guns because unlike this fool, I am a true Star Wars man. Jar Jar was supposed to be a Sith Lord. I'm sorry, George Lucas didn't have the cojones to carry through. I'm sticking to it. <laughs> so we're going to cut to a quick commercial and see if we can uh, get back uh, on track with our cameras. If not, that's why we have backups. Two is one. One is none. Okay, so. Woodcock. <laughs> no, that's that was before Woodcock's time, man. <laughs> Kyle Noah would tell you that. But we'll be right back after this uh, quick commercial break. So, we'd like to give you a small gift of us. So, this is Gunfire, and you are watching Balkan Debris. <laughs> We're still black. We, you know, we had uh, our green room give us a call, but you know, we're gonna switch back over real quick to <laughs> our other cam, our backup cam. So, Josh, who do we have joining us in the uh, in the chat? Let's uh, see. We got uh, Twig Humphrey. We got Andrew, as always. Let's see. Oh, Chad. Chad actually got the hammer comment of the night last week, but. Because it is our one year anniversary, he says that he's gonna donate the shirt that he would have won to tonight. So we're giving away two shirts mm. tonight. Two shirts. So uh, let's see, we got Twig Humphrey Chad, Chad, Chad's oh. blowing up the chat. Come on, guys. We got uh, Dragonfly from Nemesis. Yeah, I've seen that. Jesse Lopez, V Corp's mods are better. V Corp's Well, I mean, yeah. V the Falcon Core has been going on a little bit longer, so just I mean, a little. when it comes to AI, it's all about that time and processing power. So we're got a lot of catching up to do. It's all in right. its infancy. Yeah. So um, so until we figure this one out, uh, it's it's event time. Oh no, no, it's event time. I'm usually time. like looking at this camera, and now I got to look over your shoulder. Yeah, but but before we get to events, before we get to events, so we can. Uh, Bring these uh, this, these gentlemen in. 
uh, and introduce them, and they can join us during our event segment. Everybody, please welcome Corey, Salt Cider, and Ryan. I already forgot how. Nagel? <laughs> Is that right, Ryan? Neglect. You're so bad. Neglect. 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 Remember? I, you're neglecting I, to remember his I name. I know. I'm neglecting to, to remember his name. I can't, I can't, I can't believe it. Um, guys, thank you very much for, for joining us tonight. We greatly uh, appreciate you guys taking the time to, Good come, to, be back. to come hang yeah. out with us. So, dude, you are messing with me harsh right now, aren't you? All right. So, you know, he's actually not ticklish. What really gets him is, you know, <laughs> the donuts. The donuts. It's the donuts. All right, Josh, we got the three minute uh, event update. Uh, Ryan and Corey, feel free to chime in uh, if you have any comments about any of the events that uh, that old Darth Falcon talks about here. Yeah, whatever. All right. <laughs> uh, why don't I ever have like a cool picture? Like I've got like lots of these real like smoldering like event pictures. Like why don't I get one of those? I never get that. Even like when I'm a guest, I never get that. <laughs> no respect. No respect. All right. Uh, okay. Extreme Airsoft Rhode Island's nine-year anniversary event, August 10th to 11th in the Northeast region. And that is in South Kingstown, Rhode Island. Nine years, wow. One That's, more year and they score. I know, <laughs> I know. Sorry. Uh, Operation <laughs> Extraction, August 11th in the Midwest region uh, at Center Mass Airsoft in Kansas City, Kansas. That's it? Yeah, I mean, you, where are the e-celebs? I know. Like, there should be like e-celebs <laughs> attached know. to each one of these events. I know. Otherwise, like, what am I, what am I spending my hard-earned money for? I know, right? Oh, I mean, everybody wants to follow Jedi. I think, I, like, think I, I hit you. I got you. <laughs> I got you. Oh, you got man. you. You got tagged by Cyber Gun BBs. How does that make you feel? <laughs> okay, uh, Battle of Naboo, August 18th in the Midwest region. Cobra Airsoft Legion is hosting at Blast Camp Paintball and Airsoft in Hobart, Indiana. I'll, I'll probably be going to that one. You know, for for being like a home field, that's that's actually a pretty awesome field for, you know, a place to... I well, mean, I've been there like three or four times, but you guys, that's your backyard. Yeah, that's like 40 minutes from me. That game is a uh, Tracer Rounds only game. It's a night game. It's kind of cool. Yeah. You red always want to be on the red side because you can see him going, but you can't see him coming. <laughs> uh, next up, we have the Battle of Chernobyl 5, August 24th through 25th in the Rockies region. And that will be at American Paintball Coliseum in Brighton, Colorado. Yep. Uh, a lot of people don't realize that American Paintball Coliseum has their location in. Um, in Denver, which is their indoor field, but then they have an outdoor field in Brighton, and I do believe that they're opening another indoor field here in, here Colorado, in Colorado Springs. Springs. That is correct. So now they're going to be like all over the place. Uh, next up, we have War Game Oklahoma, September 1st through the 2nd in the Midwest region at D Day Adventure Park in Wyandotte, Oklahoma. Why is this, James? This is significant. This is it's Labor Day weekend. It's Labor Day weekend. Labor Day weekend. And you're going, and I'm staying home. No, you're. I'm dragging your butt with me. You're taking Phil. Mm -hmm. No, it's it's gonna be a. a I'm too all old three of us. Road trip, <clears throat> dude. I'm older than you. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Sleeping Giant. You're pausing. Uh, yeah. What's the matter? Uh, it's kind of a little derivative, isn't it? Sleeping Giant. Why would Beta you? Giant, Sleeping Giant. I guess you get faded and you fall asleep. <laughs> um, September 7th through the 9th in the Midwest region. Uh, air, this is an Airsoft Republic event at Chanut. Is I saying that right? Chanut Air Force Chanute Base. Chanut Air Force Base. Decommissioned Air, air Force Base. In Rantoul, Illinois. And it is sold out. Dude, they sold out today. 160. I'll be going to that one too. Yeah, oh, Nemesis right. is going to be representing. Nice. Yep. You have to it'll let me know how it goes. 
We're going to NFA, so you know who's going to win. So is, is uh, just so we can like get an idea of decommissioned, is Victorville decommissioned? Or is that just like a dilapidated part of the base? Um, I don't, we'll have to look up what decommissioned actually. I don't know, decommissioned to me sounds like. Because Victorville is George Air Force Base, but it looks a lot more run down than, than Chanute. I think Chanute's decommissioned, but they might still use part of the base for reserves or something. I mean, we could be approaching a new milestone event in Airsoft. You save all your dead bodies for that one event. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, uh, Operation Narcos is September 15th in the Pacific region. This is an Operation Lion Claws military and simulation series event. Look at that, you got it all out. Yeah, right there, right there, John, just for you. Uh, this is at the Santa Movie Ranch in Acton, California. I've always wanted to go to the Santa Ana Movie Ranch. Um, it just sounds like a lot of fun. Uh, but a uh, little, little PSA. Um, no Sicario loadouts because that's exclusive to Iron Man. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Operation X5, Enemy at the Gates, September 22nd to the 23rd in the Northwest region. Also a Operation Lion Claws military simulation series. Uh, at Fort Monmouth, New Jersey. Weren't you like just there? Yeah, we're going back. You're going back? Right? Yep. Is that like a true sequel or... Yeah, okay. it's part five. They've, they've had five events there so far. I always want to be that for part D. Uh, Oscar Mike, 2018, October 5th through the 7th in the Southern Region. This is hosted by Centurion Milsom event in Blakely, Georgia. Um, are you going to that? I think we were talking about that. No, I am going to Sniper Airsoft in Germany for their one year anniversary. Uh, I guess you get to go to Sniper Airsoft's little, you know. German, Oktoberfest. German beer. German Oktoberfest. Oktoberfest. Yeah, this is good. Das gut, ja. Uh, Cinemass Airsoft, one year event, October 6th in the Midwest region, uh, and that'll be in Kansas City, Kansas. Full the Gap Airsoft scenario, October 12th through the 14th in the Appalachian region, uh, at the Command Decisions Warfare Center in Taylorsville, North Carolina. Now that's Warsaw versus NATO? Yep. All right. I'm over three minutes. It's fine. Just, I know. <laughs> just keep rolling. I'm this one. <laughs> Roll time. Uh, Airsoft Con 2018, October 20th in the Pacific region uh, at Evike in Alhambra, California. We'll be there. Everyone will be Everyone there. Will be there. We'll have a great tent. Sign up for the, the Alliance. We'll actually be doing a debrief live there in the booth. So. I mean, if you want to come by, that's fine, whatever. Yeah, last, last year we did it with uh, Evic Matt in the store. Yeah, in the store. I actually think it'll be, I think it'll be more fun during the event. Yeah. Um, the, store, the store was fun. It was really cool to talk to Matt, but I think uh, it'll be a lot of fun to interact with uh, everybody there. And finally, Operation Treefall, October 26th to 28th in the southern region. This is hosted by Hard Strike Milsim. Uh, at Kistachi National Forest, Louisiana. Oh, we haven't had a word to get you stumped in a while. Look at that. Kistachi, look at that. Kistachi. And that is it. That is it for events. So, we're going to take a quick commercial break, see if we can get back on track uh, with what's going on. So, we'll be right back after this event video from Blast Camp 4. This is Virgil from Historic Blast Camp Paintball and Airsoft, and you're watching the Falcon Debrief.
Greg Nichols, stop yelling at us. Yes. Man, we got that main camera back. Look yeah, at Tree Fall is November 3rd and 4th. Yeah, I just, tree, I we're not doing what's November. In front of me. Avery Prince of Cards. It was the last one. I know. All right. We only go out. We only can do so many events, Greg. Avery, wait you your turn. Named after a label, and you can't even get the print. Wait your turn. <laughs> so, uh, Corey, smile for us. Let him know that your 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 picture is not frozen. Um, I'm not frozen. No, nope. he's not frozen. Ryan, Ryan's just a little camera side. You you still with us there in the uh, the green room in Pennsylvania? There, Ryan. I I am. Yeah. No straws at the California event. Oh goodness. Well, during the break, uh, it looks like we were able to fix our camera issue. So, Avery, way to step I gotta up. I stop looking over this guy's shoulder. I mean, Avery, she stepped up. She did. She, now we're looking over here. Main camera one. I mean, you only had her crying in the corner for the last 20 minutes. Shh. It's okay. She got through her one strike. Uh, we got Tim Green joining us from I mean, the Midwest region. You can threaten somebody with food stamps so often. <laughs> Hey, Chris Nielsen from Brigade Nielsen says, Loving the shirt, Corey. <laughs> Let's see, Greg Nickel from Heart Strike Nielsen. Blue Barracudas. Uh, we got James <laughs> Lindsay. What is up? Who? James Lindsay. You, you know, Freddie Flux is watching. What's Fred, up, Freddie? Veterans of Airsoft. Or is it Veterans for Airsoft? Veterans for Airsoft. It's Veterans for Airsoft. Veterans Airsoft. for Airsoft. That's right. That's right. Uh, Devin Moss in the house. Man, guys and gals, uh, hit that share button. Let's get uh, 50 viewers in here. We've got two t-shirts to give away, one for the hammer comment of the night. Feel free to engage. I hear Josh Warren is somewhere in the mountains of Colorado with no cell service. Is he really? <laughs> Man, got to be gotta be digging. I'm up. not creeping. No, you're not. I'm not creeping. No, you're not. So uh, tonight, uh, we got two, two guests uh, because we've been listening uh, to everyone out there. Uh, you, you folks are loving the topic focused uh, shows uh, with a driving topic and uh, multiple guests to provide more feedback, more input. So tonight we're going to be talking about uh, marks, the, the designated marksman in airsoft. And there's a reason why we didn't, I didn't say sniper. It's because it has to be a 308 mag <laughs> with the magnification scope. No. <laughs> So Ryan and Corey, you have because to. You have when, to, you the have bat, to when the mag's bigger, they hit harder. You have to pardon Josh because he hasn't looked at the show notes, so he has no clue where this ride is going. Tonight. I don't. I didn't. I didn't even bother. Sounds about that. right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Makes sense. I mean, I may or may not have invested in a VFC, you know, SSR, and got the, you know, the P20. I'm max sorry. And, uh, <laughs> you know, doled out all that cash and. Miraculously, I was not Mark Wahlberg, so I'm a little bitter. <laughs> <laughs> so if you guys and gals watching out there, episode 51, hit that share, hit that like button. Um, if you've got a question regarding designated marksman, whether it's loadout, uniform, events, whatever, for any of us, uh, myself, Josh, Corey, or Ryan, did you just give me the finger? No. Look like you gave me the finger when you were like rubbing your mustache there. <laughs> we love each other. It's like husband wife kind of dynamic thing. But we're gonna go ahead and kick it off. I am not the wife. <laughs> You're what the man? All right. To kick us off tonight, uh, let's talk about uh, roles of designated uh, marksmen as outlined um, with many event uh, producers. I mean, you pretty much only see in rule sets uh, sniper and you know DMR. So, you know, guys, do you, do you, uh, Corey and Ryan, do you think uh, do you think they're just covering all the bases when they just put the FPS limits in there, or, or you know, do they actually anticipate you know doing uh, you know expanding on those specialty roles? You want to go first, Corey? No, I was like, is there a delay? <laughs> I mean, my my. I'm getting a little weirdness on the the mic here, so it's hard for me to hear you. But uh, I assume what you asked was uh, whether or not they just uh, put the roles there so people can use the guns, or if they yeah. actually expect people to play the roles. Exactly. Um, I, th I think that they hope people will play the roles, um, but a lot of people would take advantage of 
the just playing that position to use the gun. Uh, I haven't seen very much enforcement on any airsoft event host um, of kind of forcing the players into that role, whether through missions or uh, by a rule set. Uh, it's just kind of they let you pick it and hope that you would play it, uh, but I don't necessarily think that they're doing anything really to make those roles uh, unique in any way. Um, I actually had experience with someone enforcing the rules. Uh, you guys, have either of you ever uh, been to or heard of uh, an event in Utah called uh, Rhodesian Revolt? I have not. That's okay. I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of like localized to the region. Um, I think two years ago was their last game, but it was kind of had, had a really strong following because it was a heavily, it's, it was an intense role playing type of, of scenario. And uh, in, the, in their rule set, when it came down to DMR and sniper rifles, uh, after you checked in, so basically uh, finished your check in and getting your patch, uh, signing your release waivers and stuff, you actually had to go through a qualification course for uh, the DMR as well as the sniper. So you had to be able to uh, effectively, um, you know, use a, either with a rangefinder or eyeballing it, judge distance for your minimum engagement, and then like hit a target at you know at uh, different increments of uh, range with success, and then like you know they had, you had their blessing. If you didn't pass, you didn't get to use that rifle in that role. I would be all for that. Because currently, like, with how the rule sets are now, like, it doesn't force the player to play the rule, to, like, play the role as it's intended. All it does is allow them to bump up their FPS and throw a scope on an M4. Yep. <laughs> that's, yep. like, my that's, Which is, like, there's only, I, I only know of one, I, I have limited experience as far as event posts go. But I only know of one actual like event that forces people to kind of play the role. Almost every other event I've ever been to, it's just you throw a scope on an M4 and you get to run at like 50 FPS more. Yeah. yeah. Which yeah, I, mean, I think it comes I down some some comes down to the players too. Like players need to want to f play that role themselves, and most people don't. They just want that 50 FPS. <laughs> yeah, I mean I run uh, Chrono. A lot. I mean, I'm, I'm having my own games. I run Chrono for other event hosts often, and you'll see a lot of people trying to squeak through, like, an M4, or I, I've even seen submachine guns with a scope on them to try and squeak them through as a DMR, and it definitely <laughs> isn't playing to the role. To uh, me, like, like the, the bo bare minimum bottom is, like, an SPR. Well, yeah, I have a Mark 12 myself, and any gun that can realistically be argued as a purpose-built weapon for a marksmanship role, um, I mean, you could accept that. You could get a little stricter on it. I wouldn't be upset if they told me I couldn't use my SPR as a DMR. Mm. Um, I, but there's but a lot a of... 300 blackout! <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's up-chambered. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but no, yeah. Uh, as it stands right now, it definitely there's there's not enough regulation and not enough uh, rules to really guide those players uh, into the positions and get the right people into the DMR position and get the people just trying, like Ryan said, to get the extra F FPS well, out of that position. I mean, it's just it's just my opinion um, that I think that events and hosts are um, they're too quick to lower the bar instead of expecting the yeah you know player base to rise to the level so they lower the they constantly lower the bar yeah I, I i completely agree with that there's there's very few events that i've been to where i really feel like they're trying to really like hardcore enforce the rules and have the attitude of well if you don't like it you know hey go go play somewhere else's game you know mm -hmm. and you know i i get it like when you you are emotionally and a lot of times physically invested in your platform and you know it's like you're so disappointed because you know a lot of guys you know we have to budget we have to pick what events we go to and you know part of that budget is you know ramping up your gun getting the upgrades getting that one specific gun and playing with your homies and then when someone says uh no you can't 
<laughs> uh, I think people are afraid of that, but I think it's 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 like that caveat that's it's holding it back. And honestly, I throw that back on the player, <laughs> but I'm just an asshole. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, everybody wants to play every role, uh, and not everybody has the money to play every role. Um, so, yeah, you. Unfortunately, when you get to a national level, the larger scale ops, the the unique AOs and stuff like that, you do you do start have to invest, start having to either choose your role or invest more money um, in different weapons platforms if you want to play uh, any different type of role. I, I think it's at a certain point. It has to stop. You have to stop saying like, "Okay, everyone can do whatever they want," and you have to start uh, regulating the players because it gets competitive, and you want yeah, you want people uh, to fall. Um, it it starts an arms race in a sense, because you know you bring something to the table, and it's either you know you either come back and meet on you know equal footing, which is not a fair fight, but. Uh, <laughs> You know, that, that's how the game, the community, the sport, the technology all evolves. I mean, that's, I think that's where uh, we saw like HPA, HPA tapped rifles, um, and HPA systems tuned more for that DMR role because of the heavyweight, it's more precise, you don't have to take as many shots. And I think that that's where we started seeing kind of that segue into, uh, HPA, it was like adopted by the precision shooters first, and then it's kind of like trickled down to becoming widely accepted. So you can you can you can do similar things with an AG. It just takes more work. Oh yeah, <laughs> and that's uh, and I mean uh, don't get me wrong, like tuning. Uh, I've I've ran HPA up until recently. I've ran HPA exclusively the entire time I have played airsoft, and it. I mean, there's some there's some finesse to HPA too. But it's a little bit more forgiving for mistakes and for like you know not voluming correctly and stuff like that. I don't so think it just it does make it a little easier. Mistakes, because um, you can spend the same. You can spend you know eight hundred to a thousand, fifteen hundred dollars on on a good DMR build. But when it's an AEG, it's an art, and there's a lot of uh, tolerances and um, you know like you said those volumes and. You know everything. Yeah, it's, being like, it's, a, lot and lined it's up. a lot more science. Yeah, right. It's, but I felt that once I started to accept HPA, because I was really resistant to it for a long time, I felt HPA had it was repeatable. The formula was repeatable. You use this gun, this barrel, this combination, tune it to these settings, go, and it was easier to to recreate um, success on a on a like a repeatable level. Whereas like an oversight in an AEG is, you know, you got to tear it all the way back down. Then you got to wipe everything down and make sure it's loot. Put it all back together. With HPA, you pop it out and, you know, you check a couple O-rings. Make sure something's not sticking. There you go. Sorry, I'm rambling. You are. <laughs> got to give him a gummy. Because the chat's blowing up, man. All right, sorry. You, you can, like, I see all these populating. You, yep. you, you do the questions. There we go. So... You guys, uh, you you both know uh, Peter Noble, running UFS yep. out at AMS uh, Games. He loves running with his M14 EBR as a DMR. Um, you know, bacon from Canada. Now this is this I'm is not, always everything's better in Canada. I don't know if this is better in Canada. So I'm gonna get I'm gonna bring this up to Ryan and Corey and see what they think. Let me guess, all your water tastes like Pierre. Yeah, <laughs> Airsoft Canada has a sniper certification course. That allows you to use higher FPS bolt action rifles. Now, do you? I mean, I really don't think airsoft players, you know, south of the border, are going to do any kind of extra training to fulfill a specialty role. I mean, we saw it in the Guardian missions. It's like they people really didn't care about doing the medical training. I mean, are, yeah, this is one. Do you think? Do you think players are really going to care that they want to go do an, a sniper course? Just so they can use a gun that they're spending their own money on at an event. I mean, let's be real. Like, how many people were like ecstatic about ruining their kit or their uniforms and going to missions? <laughs> well, I think Ryan, uh, I think Ryan and I 
agree on the fact that we would love to see a qualification course like that because it would get rid of a lot of the people who are kind of only halfway into the role. We like mm-hmm. like we said, we want to see the pe- people fully committed, uh, fully uh, not just in what you're buying and what you're wearing and the gun you have, but in the mentality of the role. You wanna you wanna play the character. Um, and those characters in, in the story of Airsoft have to go through their qualification course, right? We're all Navy SEALs when we get on the field. Navy SEALs had to do it, so why shouldn't we get to play the qualification as well? And then it separates the not the men from the boys, but the uh, people who are really into it uh, against the people who are just into it to get that benefit of the gun or whatever it might be. Yeah, that extra 50 FPS or... I, I... I think like with any with like not just like talking about just the DMR role. I think with any of the roles and in any of these games, you get what you put in. And if you're willing to like go that extra mile to to play more realistically and to act more realistically in that role and stuff like that, if everybody would do that, it'd make the games amazing. What the problem is and I I feel like when we're talking about events is there's not too many events that really push that as like a hey, this should be something really that should be a big part of the game. Like, I'm not talking about just impressions either. Like, a lot of people now, like, the whole new thing is doing impressions and, you know, imitating units in real life and stuff. That's cool. But even outside of that, even if you're playing a game, like, that didn't necessarily take place in any kind of real-life scenario, like, playing the role and having, like, a LARP aspect to the games and stuff, I think makes it better for everybody. Well, here's a question for our viewers, you know, out there that are watching. Uh, Do the viewers... Do you folks think that events do a good job of incorporating marksman roles into gameplay? Um, and while you guys are answering in the chat, uh, Ryan, Corey, what do you guys think? Ryan, you could take this one first. Uh, Go! <laughs> I, I, think, I think only certain ones do and most don't. Uh, again, it comes down to like with what they push as like what they they think is really important in their games, you know. Um, some do like they they have specific, you know, like hey, you guys are gonna go do this as you know as marksmen or a like they're really strict about you know only maybe one marksman per squad or something like that. Like some rules are used. Um, some of them could care less though, like. I think the majority of them could care less. It's more of uh, allowing people to, you know, throw a big scope and get that extra FPS, you know, 50 FPS or something, so they don't alienate some of their player base. And I feel like if event organizers maybe cared a little bit less about alienating their their player base, like because of something as small as that, and cared more about like making the event more realistically more realistic, they would put out a better product for people to go to, and you'd have better events. Instead of like a million cookie cutter events that are all yeah. semi, you know, fairly yeah. similar with um, similar rule sets. Uh, I mean, this is all easy for me to say because I'm not an event organizer. <laughs> no, I'm not throwing shade at anybody in particular. Uh, like, preface it. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, it's perfectly fine to preface it because I'm everybody yeah. takes stuff too personally. Well, what nowadays. what Ryan's saying there, I I think about losing your your initial player base uh, by re- restricting the game. And I know for a fact that a lot of event hosts. I mean. I've hosted plenty of events in the past. I, I know you, restricting your player base is always bad, um, mm-hmm. as far as from an event host perspective, right? You wanna you wanna sell out your game. You wanna get the most amount of players to attend your game. And the more rules you make, the more people are going to maybe say, "Nah, I'm not gonna do this one. I'll do something else." Um, but also in my experience, if you create um, like a sub culture within your game, it may take people away at first but once people realize that the guys who took the chance and took part in this subculture within the game and are forming a second community within that event or sequence of events they're going to want to join into that um like for example i'm creating the blue barracudas right now in american milsim it's going like we're the plan is to kind of create a subset of players who are like-minded, enjoy running with each other, and we may not get the kind of... I mean, people might be wary of joining it at first because they don't know what to expect, but when they see people enjoying it, I think it will draw a much more dedicated crowd. And I think uh, snipering and DMRs 
and if you if you set them up specifically um, give them a special set of rules that'll create a camaraderie among them and give them their own special game that people will enjoy so if you're just joining us uh, we just asked the question to our viewers and our special guests you know do you think that events do a good job of incorporating uh, marksman roles in the gameplay and you know Rob Marshall nope uh, Chris uh, absolutely not Freddie Flux says depends on the AO and the player but I would say no um, you know Michael Bright says only a few do now you know Christine actually makes a very good comment snipers make up such a small percentage of the players at these events I wonder how much it would even benefit event organizers to focus more on that group of players. <laughs> I also liked how she appreciated the, uh, the medical training. Oh, yeah, I know. She, she does like the medical training. Yeah. Um, no, that's, that's absolutely a valid point. I think everyone is so focused on the negative that I think it, it uh, kind of just passes people by. They don't even think about you know the interest that they may gain from people that are looking for you know, that, that subculture in the game. And, it, and everybody's we're, worried about like what you're going to exclude and people are going to turn away. But right, and no. we're not specifically talking solely ghillie suit, bolt action, <laughs> sniper. Okay, we're talking designated marksman. This is a full gambit of stuff, which actually segues into our next so, uh, question. <laughs> I got one for you. So, um, so we were talking about uh, my my friend Mike. Yep. We play here. Um, you know, former Marine. Uh, sniper, you know, he gives you. I, I can let him give you the. One day, if I can get him on the show, he can re list off his resume. But we did a game once um, because when they did uh, their their field training exercises with snipers, you know, obviously you have the mile system for your riflemen and of that of that nature. But like snipers, there's like no precise system to actually tag a target that far away at the ranges that you're engaging. So what they did, it was like a, um, kind of like a Simon Says game with a radio. So um, obviously it's in a military environment, so everybody's looking for it. So they're looking for movement. They're looking for, um, you know, like uh, reflections off the scope, all that fun stuff. And the spotter will call out the target on the radio and then they just use a blank. To signify that you know they've taken the shot, mm. and it's up to the guys running the exercise whether you know it's a hit or a miss. But when we tried it in an airsoft environment, it drastically changed how players behave because usually in airsoft your engagement distance is what three hundred feet, mm -hmm. and you see somebody over there. Most of the time you're like waving at your buddy, flipping them off, you know, aim higher. But if there's something out there that all they have to do is see you. And you hear a bang, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> so I don't think that airsofters could actually play like a full tilt sniper game if there were special rules involved because I've seen it happen and it's hilarious. Because then like a slow game goes to like a dead crawl. Yeah, that's true. And uh, just to remind you folks, uh, you can see the banner up here. Uh, Hammer comment of the night, mod 2.5 is watching so um, Right now, I, I mean, I, I caught one earlier. Rob Marshall was ask, actually asking Ryan if he'd marry him. <laughs> you know Scruffs, don't you, Ryan? Uh, sadly, yeah. <laughs> oh, my Mr. Goodness. Nielsen, your avatar yeah. on your Facebook profile looks eerily like you. The, the resemblance is scary. Oh, oh, that was awesome. That was awesome. So the application of uh, marksmanship roles in Airsoft game... Um, would you guys agree that there's pretty much two roles? You got observe and report, and you got scouting. Care to comment? Yeah, I would say those are the primary roles of if you're playing sniper properly in a Milsom style game. Because as uh, he mentioned, as Josh mentioned, we don't have the type of massive range that you would in real life over your standard rifleman. Um, so you do have to play the other roles of a sniper, is watching enemy important causeways, enemy bases, things like that, and reporting to your command structure. Um, 
and to go out there and try to remain hidden and discover what's going on in the game before your main force does, uh, just so that they can obviously put their chess pieces in the right spot and come into the battle more prepared. Uh, I know Ryan has more to say about that. Uh, I could I could add to that too that they have another role of uh, potentially doing Overwatch, especially if you're playing in some sort of defensive position or something like that. Uh, other than just like absorb and report and scout type stuff, Overwatch is also potentially important. Um, although you can have a standard rifleman or a, you know some guy with an LMG do that as well. Um, but how many I feel like have actually I, done an LPOP. That's like a long game. <laughs> I, see, I, I, that that plays into like some of the events, like maybe not not being specifically formatted to allow these roles to really shine in what they're supposed to do. Yeah, we actually, uh, Chris, you know, he says um, at AMS events, the scouts have had a positive impact in the observe and report role they have, but that is a completely different tier of player uh, that one that is simply throwing. Uh, a scope on a gun, I think I'm missing some grammar there somewhere, um, that is a completely different tier of player other than just simply throwing a scope on a gun. Um, Greg Nichol says if the CO is utilizing their support player's property, it's a whole lot more fun. Uh, Michael says if you want to have players really play whatever specialty role you have in the game, be it sniper, DMR, whatever, then you sort of want the specialty roles to push the players who won't do that away that's not necessarily a bad thing oh and we also have uh alex from ams alex um, all right alex how's it going yeah he, he's senior uh admin and uh game controller over at american he's, nelson he's um, here to take notes he's here to make our job our uh, lives more fun <laughs> oh yeah make he's the like, game oh, better yeah, I got, he actually, I got a job for you <laughs> doing research market research right yeah. now good job alex he actually says it's hard to get specific players to stop what they're doing and go on a specific mission. That's actually it really uh, is. Yeah, they need they need to, they need to not be at your events then. <laughs> yeah, not really. Well, I think people they they need to in. they need to be they need to be listening to like when like if somebody tells me say say Kaiju's in tra in charge of that event, Kaiju tells me, hey, go do this. If that thing sucks, I'm gonna go do it. It doesn't matter whether I want to or not. That's what you signed up to do. You're there to do a milsim event. If somebody tells you to go do something, no matter how bad it sucks, you go do it. So, uh, more about um, Marksman. Do you guys think uh, Marksman, you know, it's okay to run solo, or do you think they only should run a two-man team? I think any airsofter that runs solo is not a middle simmer in the first place. <laughs> yeah. Um, Man, he just put it right there. Like, right there. Bam. I agree 100%. I have a 15-year-old kid that does the lone wolf thing on Fortnite, and... What that abomination they call Rainbow Six? That's not what I grew up with. But yeah, I think that's absolutely right. I, I think true milsimers and team players and guys that really, really want to uh, challenge themselves either run in a pack or a team. Yeah. Like very minimum two people. Yeah. That's a very minimum. Like probably even more than that. Probably go out in teams of five. Well, I mean, and still, you fire teams. What? <laughs> and, if, and if you're going out to do these, you know, uh, mainly observe and report uh, missions, um, you're kind of going out there away from the rest of the group. Mm -hmm. You're by yourself, and you know, like a place so, place like D Day, Oklahoma D Day. You don't want to be hitting that terrain on your mm -hmm. own. Get lost. Get hurt on those well, ones. How well you know, it, but right. But so, I mean, you like, should always have your buddy. subculture, like. Come on, guys have to admit it. Like when you're out there playing the long game, long distance, being patient, observing, like, come on, there's gotta be that game. Like how many guys can you tag while they're taking a piss? I think yeah, we're oh, yeah. a story though, on this one. You, you, you always you make and your Danny, own right? sniper. Tell us tell us your story about you and Danny at Broken Home, Ryan. Oh, uh, I that was just us ambushing dudes along that road. That was for me, that was one of the, the the more fun things I've ever got to do, going out with just one other guy and and basically just sitting up on a road and just continually hitting dudes respawning, <laughs> basically. 
we're supposed to be out there looking for vehicles, but no vehicles ever came down the road we were on, unfortunately. Oh, so man. we just sat up on the road and just literally waited for groups of twos and threes to walk <laughs> out of, you know, a couple hundred yards out of their spawn after they respawn and we're, we're leveling them. And then, of course, doing that, you know, eventually there's a response and it's usually a big response of like a large number of guys coming to get you. And that right there, you've already, you know, done your worth for, you know, you've got two guys out there and you're getting a response from like maybe 30 dudes coming to try and kill you. That's where it's so right there. You you've pulled guys away, you know. Yeah, no, I guess uh, I guess uh, what's that? Harassing the enemy, uh, depleting their resources. I mean, that's a tactic too. I mean, attrition. <laughs> well, it's more than just attrition. You you've now made that because you know as as Ryan and Danny are taking these dudes out, that gets back to that faction. That gets back to that command, and now that command's like they have to think twice about. Oh, that I don't have freedom of movement anymore. I just can't go strolling from my fob down to Pegasus Bridge. There's something in between, and now I don't. I can't just la di da di just walk out of the fob as if you yeah, know I'm you're Superman. Just, you're just laughing because you know you're giving giving Woodcock a headache. <laughs> that, um, that, well, <laughs> that right there only works though if the people that you're playing against don't know to come at you with overwhelming force. This that is true. That is very, very true. Because sometimes, uh, you know, you got that lone wolf mentality where those one or two guys are that team. It, they, like, take it as a challenge. So they won't tell anybody, and they'll just keep coming after you. That happens, too. Uh, well, that kind, of, that kind of kicks back to uh, Christine's question uh, earlier about why should they put effort into, say, a sniper or a DMR, giving them special missions and special roles if they make up such a small proportion of the player base uh, at an event. In the circumstance with Ryan uh, and his spotter, they affected a larger amount of players on the field um, than just snipers. So now all of a sudden, the enemy players who may have just been moseying around mindlessly looking for a mission have something to do. They have an important, got to go find the sniper. He's slowing down our whole mission here, our whole... Uh, force now all of a sudden all these kids who had nothing to do have something to do uh, so it's, hand, it's, it's a sniper when played properly can give other people things to do and now you're affecting the game on a larger uh, aspect uh, Chris Nielsen made a really good point that if you're by yourself you're a liability uh, yeah we've been talking liability for a couple weeks in a yeah, row that's a big one um, because I've seen so many games halted because someone gets lost or someone freaks out you know, if that person has a, a tendency to go off on their own and they decide they want to go back to the tent and go sleep, everybody's looking for him and he's, he's sleeping. I mean, it ruins it for everybody. Yeah. Um, well, even even from a in-game standpoint, assuming the sniper is smart enough to find his way off the field and smart enough to eat and drink enough water to not become a heat cast, yeah. a, single, a single sniper can't carry enough equipment and complete enough tasks in a reasonable amount of time to do the job adequately. You need a spotter. You need a second person with you to do B while you're doing A because there's a, a sniper team has to perform as well as an entire squad but among two players. And one dude, he just can't do it all. You can't look through the scope, take out targets of opportunity while reporting on the radio and protecting yourself if the enemy gets within your minimum engagement distance. And I mean, if you did have all that equipment, you would not be very stealthy. You'd be like this huge bulky character with eight guns walking around and all these radios and antennas sticking off. You just, you need the two guys at least, at least. Well, there, there's, another, there's another aspect that I think gets overlooked with uh, snipers or DMRs um, when you said being stealthy. Uh, years uh, years ago, I had an uh, old the sniper handbook of something. Well, it's about that big, green and white. Ranger handbook? Thick. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> uh, it talked about um, back in like the 70s and 80s when they really started trying to develop suppressors for sniper rifles, for long guns. And they found them to be uh, less effective because one of the... One of the one of the advantages a sniper has is when they let a round go, everyone stops. Everyone hits the deck. So, you know, in airsofts, you're taking a shot at 
you know, 100, 200, 300 feet, it's obviously silent at that point. You built your your rifle to be as quiet as possible. So you hit somebody, and all you get is like hit, and everybody kind of goes. And everybody kind of meerkats like, yeah, like what's yeah. going on? <laughs> but <laughs> you know, in real life, when that happens, you know, in the jungle and like around flies and someone drops every guy is oh shit you know it's the deck <laughs> and i think uh i think that that's one of those things that uh a lot of players going into airsoft wanting to be a sniper like they they've seen that in movies or they've read about it and that that's their mindset that i'm going to be like Tom this menacing, playing sniper. i'm going to be this menacing force that's going to slow down the main assault and they get out there and it's like <laughs> i didn't even see where to go Oh, this is bullshit. <laughs> Camo ammo doesn't work for crap. <laughs> um, so when is it practical to wear uh, different types of kits such as uh, ghillie suits, uh, hoods, uh, or no camo at all? Tracksuit? I'm sorry. In Bosnia? Tracksuit in Bosnia. I have, I have played a game in a tracksuit. <laughs> Did it work? How the Schwe balls? Well, I mean, I was a I was a Slavic civilian, at, you know, in Chechnya, so yeah, yeah it worked pretty well. <laughs> Everything was tracked suits there. Uh, Perfect camouflage. Um, I, it's about the AO. It's about the mission you're given. Um, you have to know ahead of time if you're going into the woods, if you're going into an urban environment, then you have to know ahead of time if you're going to be attached to a squad or you're going to be on your own. Uh, for example, if you're going in the woods, I mean, most people would assume, okay, I'm going in the woods, a ghillie suit or a hood might be a good idea. But if you're going in the woods and you're attached to a squad, the ghillie suit might slow you down to the point where you can't keep up with the squad. You're going to get hot. Or the enemy will be able to pick you out more easily from the squad. You can actually use the squad as camouflage sometimes. If you dress like the rest of the squad, they're not going to realize the asset that you're carrying around or the knowledge that you're carrying around as a sniper. He said that. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're always carrying around. I've seen his assets. Ass. He's got some nice assets. <laughs> no, and, uh, Ryan, do you have anything to uh, add to that? No, like cam camouflage, like it's very, very, I mean, even gear to an extent, maybe not, not as much as like a ghillie suit and stuff, but it's very, very AO specific. You really, really need to know like the AO and have, you know, to have like knowledge like like broken homes a really good example of like an ao that's actually really good to run a ghillie um it's good and bad i guess it's bad because it's you know hot it's every hot. time <laughs> at home. Um, chris said at broken home don't he was still hot nothing at all he was yeah. tempted to wear nothing man i don't know if i'd want to see that chris that's just kind of scary at that point you've got your big screen with your you with your drone you might as well bring like the kiddie pool and like you can keep it in the camp well chris also has got the you know the the, the big truck i mean he can have oh yeah they could do they could do like uh redneck style just put some tarps in the back and fill that baby up and ride <laughs> around the ao yeah i'll do that might work mm -hmm. i don't know that's i think uh the ai here is kind of going nuts that might be a pretty sad. Yeah. So uh, Chris, just Chris has the current hammer comment <laughs> of the night. Oh, yeah. Saying he, you know, he's tempted to wear nothing at all. So uh, keep the keep the chat coming. Keep the so, comments coming. Uh, like, I have one comment to make on ghillie suits for because we're gonna. You're always gonna have new snipers in the sport. Everybody's first gun is a friggin' Well L96 for some reason or an Mbo one. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, amen. For very new snipers, and nine out of ten of them are like this don't get a ghillie suit. You have to put lots of hours into a ghillie suit. A bad ghillie suit is worse than no ghillie suit at all. Yeah. You have to put the hours, you have to buy the quality materials, you have to roll it around in mud and roll it around wait, in wait, water. You mean I just can't go down to Dick's Sporting Goods and buy yeah, they got know, like a little kit, a Spartan, you know, real tree hunting okay. top and bottom. I can't do that. You can, but it's not going to help you. Okay. Awesome. The, 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 the leafy suits are are okay if you actually garnish them correctly yeah. and put into but the work. I, like I like FSB currently runs leafy it. suits. Like that's they're they're legit. Like dudes in Russian military run leafy suits and stuff, and they they work. Um, but again, they garnish them a little bit and they alter them a little bit. But a lot of the synthetic stuff like doesn't work nearly as well. 
Yeah, no, so I, I remember that. Get yourself the heat stroke and just buy a boonie hat, buy some multicam, buy some well, uh, uh, woodland marp hat works really good. I think we're Get over, a good camouflage. We're overlooking like a little piece of kit. Uh, when I dabbled in the DMR world, one of my uh, favorite pieces of kit was the sniper veil. And I think that a lot of people uh, don't employ. They're hard employ. to find now. They're they, hard to find. They are hard to find, but they don't employ them properly because they think that they're meant to wrap around their rifle. But when I just had like a simple DMR, you know, long gun scope set up with that, you know, higher FPS ceiling, but I could sit there under an evergreen tree and just drag it across the needles and throw it over my head and drape it across the gun and I've immediately broken up my profile. Or laying down, you know, I'm wearing green and I happen to have my tan one on me, like lay down in a, in a um, grass field, dry grass field, and lay it over you. Like, there's all sorts of, like, little tricks you can do. And it's, going over. it's lightweight. You, you yeah. just scrunch it up, throw it in And it goes back couch. to, like, what Corey was saying is, you know, when you got it around your neck like a regular uh, um, Shemag, like, you fit in, and you don't look yeah. like anything special. Well, if, if we're going to – specifically, I have an interesting way of doing the same kind of thing. Uh, I actually keep, you know, those 3D camo nets that they use to cover vehicles or put over the top of GP tents and stuff. I actually keep a six foot by four foot section of that in my assault pack when I go out in bigger ops. And I'll just keep a little tab of it sticking out the top of the backpack. Um, so if I need to, like, quickly disguise myself, I'll just pull it out just enough to cover the top of my head. Um, and then if I have the time to make a firing position or something like that, I'll pull the entire thing out. Instead of having to wear a ghillie suit, I have a big 3D camo net that will cover my entire body. And I keep a couple bungee cords in my backpack as well, and I can stretch those between trees and actually make a real snipe hide. Nice. Um, bungee cords also double for stringing across windows, and you can rest your rifle mm -hmm. um, on top of the bungee cord. They're quick hit. Yeah, actually... I uh, have a Viper hood um, that took me just to attach each piece of yarn individually. I binge watched like four seasons of the unit. And if you guys don't remember <laughs> that show, that was an hour long oh, show. Gosh. So four seasons of the unit, it took me to completely yarn just a hood and shoulders, right? That was, <laughs> that was it. So, you know, and that's not even... <laughs> Josh, oh my gosh, somebody hammer comment? What was it? <laughs> Speak. I find if you walk around looking confused and unimportant, you don't get shot at all. That's camo. <laughs> oh, okay. So Chris, Chris is, Chris is bringing the hammer. I straight up. So read, read that one straight. more time. <laughs> I, I find if you walk around looking confused and unimportant, you don't get shot. Best camo ever. Yeah, you just take your mag out of your gun and just like kick the dirt and like look like you're looking for something yeah you can walk right past like a freaking oh yeah blockade. <laughs> are you dead huh <laughs> are you dead that, oh, that I'm, works I'm that works that mag. works so well since most players forget their dead rags anyways at events exactly <laughs> oh i know are you dead no and then you know they're yeah we're we're out of game and then they walk past you and shoot you in the back so uh, moving on, no. what expectations should players? Have? Why does why does the why does the AI keep putting up a timestamp? Because time's so you know what time artificial it, yeah. intelligence. Yeah, I guess. But he's like it used to be like every sixth line. Now it's like every other line. Maybe he has to drain the oil or something. I don't know. So mm -hmm. what what expectations should players have going into uh, a marksman role um, at an event? Uh, expect expect to be completely useless at most events. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> well, what was that? What was that Andy Samberg movie? It's a hot rod. Just like I shit excellence <laughs> like onto the field. Like, you gotta have that positivity all the time, and you'll always find a good time. I, I realistic expectations. If you're going to play as a marksman. You need to be aware that you're not going to be the guy who's getting all the kills and getting the glory, and there's not going to be a lot of people who recognize it's a thankless what job. It is, yeah, what it is that you're doing. And nobody um, may ever see what you do. <laughs> yeah, I always tell people when I'm sniping, 
who are getting into sniping, I, I say I make it. I make my own game out of it. You kind of just got to know to yourself that you're doing a good job and making a difference and enjoy the little moments that you do have. Like uh, Ryan said with his, his buddy um, taking out groups of two or three guys, maybe they only took out 14 or 15 guys over the course of two or three hours, which for a regular rifleman is, is not good. Um, you should be taking out more people than that. But for a sniper, that's an extremely successful day. And you got to just understand that to yourself. That if you're playing the role, it's not a high kill count role. It's about like besting. It's more about the chess game, uh, besting the other player in the long run, being the smarter player, um, and enjoying that aspect of it. Uh, if you really want to take part in the greater game, it's going to be through the radio, not the gun. Bring a good radio and get in contact with the right people who are going to listen to you and understand what you're telling them. Uh, and then you can really make some huge differences in the game just through the radio because not a lot of people are going to have that, I guess, 300-foot view that you do of the battle space uh, that you can see through your scope. You can see a lot more than a lot of those riflemen on the ground do. Um, so, again, yeah, cheaper rate. You mentioned two things. Um, first, you mentioned gun. Does the type of rifle dictate Really? The type of experience. You're still going to yeah. try and chew through this whole list, even when Mrs. Kaiju is getting on, wondering why the hell you aren't walking through the front door right now. No, <laughs> she knows. She, she knows. She knows. Can you say the question right, again? I can. Yeah, I know. So I'm going to say the question again, because Darth Falcon interrupted. Does the, does the type of rifle uh, dictate the type of experience you're, you're going to have as a, as a marksman? And it's not more for for Mrs. Kaiju. It's for Mod 2.5 that we drag this out. So like, and is see if we can like, like. Yes. Is absolutely. there a Mose in the Gaunt of Airsoft? <laughs> I I would say the rifle doesn't have to dictate. I mean, it's going to dictate how you play if you only get one shot from a bolt action as to uh, follow up shots with a, a DMR or full auto with a support weapon. But you can play. You can be a sniper or a marksman. Let's not say sniper. You can be a marksman. You can play like a marksman with really any gun in airsoft, and that's just the nature of ballistics, the nature of airsoft, the nature of the regulations that we deal with at events. Uh, I mean, a DMR is just a semi-automatic support weapon as far as the rules are concerned um, yeah. at many event hosts. So it's a mentality. It's not about the gun. It's enjoying the, the role. I think that, like how we were talking about earlier, I think it comes down to if you want to play the part mentally... Like, the rifle doesn't necessarily dictate how you're going to play, but if you're willing to get into the role and stuff and play more, like, realistically, I guess would be the word. Yeah. What do you think uh, is some important gear uh, that... Because, you know, I mean, people are watching this like, oh, you know, this is interesting. I want to, I want to be a sniper. I mean, uh, does this require a lot of money getting into all in or... Or there's some things that all you need is just a couple of things. Uh, your biggest investment, even though we say the gun is not as important, the most expensive thing is in airsoft. You don't really need to go balls of the wall on gear. The most important, the most expensive thing is generally the gun, uh, especially if you're going into a bolt action or a DMR that's really going to shine as a DMR. You're going to have to put a little bit of money into it. There's quite a buy-in when it comes to the bolt-action rifles. The, the uh, bear on hop-up. Bear on hop-up first thing. That should be the first thing that everybody replaces on like every single rifle they buy. Amen. <laughs> Amen, uh, brother. I think so many people like overlook that like with rifles when they build rifles and stuff. They just leave like the stock barrels and stuff like that. Stock stock hop rubbers and that's like you're you're killing yourself. You can take like a stock SEMA AK and throw like a decent barrel and a decent bucking and probably shoot better than most snipers do. It's all about <laughs> lapping that SHS barrel, baby. Oh yeah, hours of lapping. Chris has a good point. At the end of the day, they all shoot a six millimeter projectile. <laughs> Dang, uh -huh. Chris this is a Shytac. <laughs> oh, the eight millimeter Shytac. Actually, the BFC barrel was the, was is meaner. That's a mean. <laughs> uh, but a couple other pieces of equipment that you need to play the true marksman role. You need a radio. 
Um, with a headset, you can't be blaring out. You're not going to be sneaky with your hand mic blaring every 10 yeah, seconds. And ditch the throat mic. They don't work yeah. anyway. I personally use, I use a hand mic, uh, mm -hmm. but it's got the little plug in it that I use. Yeah, just a yeah, FBI, FBI ear piece on. Um, it works the best for me. It's the most rugged. If the earpiece gets torn or destroyed, you can unplug it yeah. and still operate a radio. Um, but ideally, you don't want to be just hot miking to the world uh, if you're trying to be sneaky. Oh, and uh, speaking of sneaky, oh, sneaky, sneaky, we need to wish Joe from the mailroom a happy birthday today. Happy birthday, Joe. Joe. From, Joe happy birthday to Joe. Joe from the mailroom. It's his, it's his uh, 51st birthday. Is he 51? Yep. Ha <laughs> ha You didn't know that. <laughs> He's as old as our show. 51 weeks. Wow. Okay. Yeah. No. No. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, so, you know, uh, finishing up talking about gear, uh, what about... Uh, I'm sorry. I laid a what money? <laughs> oh, oh, Mrs. No, Kaiju. Money? Really, Corey? Why are you justifying all these people, especially the Kaiju, to spend more money? Hey, Chris, I, I think you have some competition with Hammer of the Night. <laughs> Uh, it's a material world. And, and, I and you are a material, material girl, Corey. Yeah. <laughs> yes, you are. Um, uh, uh, okay, so the guys from the op, they're literally coming up for the power plug. Okay. Um, they're coming up. <laughs> like, <laughs> they're making these motions. Okay. That's a little surprising. That's a little crazy. So um, we have, uh, we're, we're, so yeah, I can actually see them now. Um, they look kind of kind of dangerous. So uh, we're going to ask the mod, you know, because we're giving away uh, two shirts tonight of your choice. Uh, On off of Chad's back. Uh, he smells like cookies. Yes. So cookies and gummy bears. You want that one? Yep. And uh, so while the the mod updates us, uh, we definitely know Chris uh, Nielsen. Hammer. One of the hammer comments of the night. Uh, if you walk around looking. Confused and unimportant, you don't get shot at. Best camo ever. So that let's, is good camo. Yes, that is good camo. Um, That's why you always shoot first, ask questions later. Seriously, Mrs. Kaiju just said Kaiju is definitely a material girl too. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I tell you what, she brings the hammer when whenever she shows up. We need a new patch. Material girl. Me too, there you go. <laughs> ah, we need like quad tubes, we need tech 15s we need Surefire Everything Cry, all on the patch. Surefire. What, what's that Surefire like that they mount on M2s on tanks? Like that big Hellfire. ass thing? Hellfire, that's Hellfire. it. <laughs> uh, Mod's tell we're getting a message from Mod, check the teleprompter. So we see one one hammer comment. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, uh, so that's the one. You just well said. I know, but scroll up, is there another one up there somewhere? Maybe you put another one up there. So while we're checking for that, don't forget to head on over to ValconAlliance.com. They are a sponsor of the show. It is the largest player network in the industry. Uh, it's all about like-minded players coming together and supporting the community. Uh, getting your friends out to play, like Sniper or Medic or Support Gunner, anything like that. Or um, you don't know anybody to play with. You get to uh, see other people. Find out people in your area, events in your area, uh, fields in your area as, as well. Yes, I have been outed, I have. So, I mean, but when it all boils down to it, why are we all doing this? Because we're having fun. So yep. even if the kid wants to get a sniper rifle, give him some pointers, help him on his way, make sure he has fun, because that's what we're yeah. all here to do, right? You can be a bad sniper all you want, as long yeah. as you're trying to be a sniper. Yeah, as long as you see you. As long as you can, yeah, no ways you should try. So just make, be good, be good to each other, have fun. And yes, we did it. That's the yep. two's Tim. Mod set. I don't know. It's he's starting to have a meltdown here. Tim Ender. Runner up. Tim Ender. Runner up. Okay. Tim Ender is the runner up. Oh God. Tin Man. What did Tin Man say? He, we should just not look into it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> runner up. So it looks like we have. Uh, First place winner, Chris Nielsen. So you get the Chad shirt that smells like cookies and gummy bears. And mm -hmm. Tim Ender gets the brand new Saran Wrap brand new shirt. So, yeah. So, oh, all right. Hit us up. Uh, 
uh, message us on Facebook at the uh, Balkan Airsoft, and this guy will tend to your needs and get all your information. You're not supposed to tell him it's me that answers them. I want some bit of anonymity. I, I can say anonymity, but I can't say Appalachian. If you, I, I know, but you know. <laughs> Let's just say I could be encouraged to, you know, make sure that he delivers it. But the Tim, girl. Tim Endler, Chris Nielsen, message us. Congratulations, message us. Falcon Airsoft Messenger. Uh, with your shipping address and size and whether you want the black tea or the the gray tea and we'll get those out to you So but Ryan and Corey, thank you for putting up with uh, our shenanigans tonight. You and guys for were all great. the, the um, Helpful information all the tips all the insight. I'm sure our viewers got uh, Walk away with a lot of good uh, pointers and information. Yep, and if you want to uh, Connect with either of them uh, on Instagram. You can follow Corey at Zero Shot Airsoft. Follow his gun. Follow yep. his gun. He takes a lot of gun porn. <laughs> or, <12. laughs> yeah, or Ryan at the underscore uh, Nagel. Nagel. The underscore N E G E L E. So you can DM them, follow them, uh, ask them more questions. And that does it for us tonight. Thanks for joining us. We'll be back next week with episode 52. Thanks, man. Thanks for having me on. Bye-bye. Oh,